All right, if you have your Bible close at hand, Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11 is where we're going to be at tonight. And when you find your place in Hebrews chapter 11, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Eight. Yep, we're going to be looking at verses 8 through 10. 8 through 10. Verse number 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on the message tonight. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your word. And Father, we know that it is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. And may you use it tonight in our hearts and our minds to truly grasp the things that you have for us. Father, we ask you to help me as I speak. And Father, we ask you to minister to all of our hearts and our minds. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Abraham is an all understanding a big deal. <laughs> As you go through the entirety of the Bible, there is one that is uh, not much greater than Abraham as humanly speaking. You see Abraham going through all the different things and that he goes through, and God specifically uh, appoints him to be the person that he wanted to bless and through him uh, all the nations of the world. And so uh, <laughs> the only song I know about Abraham is that uh, song I was forbidden to sing at PCC, which is uh, Father Abraham. You know, Father Abraham, I had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right hand. Okay, we got it, we got it. So we, we know about Abraham, and we have funny songs about him. Um, and in all reality, you know, when I was thinking about that song, I'm thinking, well, on one hand, if you say, well, I'm not Jewish, so I don't really have a correlation to Abraham. So am I one of his child? Humanly speaking, not really. <laughs> I'm a Gentile, and I know that very, very much, um, and understand that very much. Uh, so is that an accurate representation of that, uh, that whole song? And the answer is no. What it means by that is if we, like Abraham, do what Abraham did, then we are the children of God. I liked what Bruce said this morning in his Sunday school, that true enough, everybody says, well, I'm a child of God. In all reality, according to the Bible, that's not true. That's not accurate. Uh, in all understanding, we are all creations of God, but that doesn't make us automatically his children. His, child, his creation rebelled against him, and now we have to have a way of escape, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. For him, you know, for us, we have to have that, and then when we put our faith in Jesus, then we become the sons of God. And uh, it's amazing to think about that I am a son of God, and think about this, Romans chapter 8, I'm, the, I'm a co-heir of Christ. I would say blasphemy if it wasn't in the Bible. That doesn't sound quite right, but yet it's right there in Scripture. So tonight we're going to look at Abraham, not just as uh, the, the mysterious father of uh, the different religions, which true enough, you, know, you, you have the Jewish people going back to Abraham, you have the Christians through the Jews back to Abraham, uh, but then also the, the, the Muslims as well, because they, they would say that Abraham sacrificed uh, Ishmael on Mount uh, Moriah, as for, for what I understand. 
So understandably, that's uh, incorrect for what Scripture says, but yet he is a, an amazing figure. But we're, tonight we're going to look at him and learn some lessons about him and how we can be encouraged in our walk before the Lord. So first of all, number one, the first thing that we're going to see tonight is that he, by faith, accepted God as real and compared to the idols that were all around him. He said, it said oh, let me go ahead and repeat that. He, by faith, accepted God as real and compared to all the idols that were around about him. Notice with me what it says here. Verse number eight. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. First off, right off the bat, you have to understand where Abraham was from. He was from Ur of the Chaldees. He was one that was in this city, and according to archaeological finds, there was immensity of idol worship during this point in time. And no doubt, uh, it says throughout uh, in Acts chapter number 7, I believe, that, uh, that his father Terah was an idol worshiper, and so, so was Abraham. But it's an interesting thing to think about that God chose one person out of the entirety of the world and says, I'm going to bless you in such a magnificent way. But yet, think about it this way. Before this point, before God met with him, he worshipped an idol just like everybody else. He prayed to idols, no doubt, like everybody else. He probably sacrificed to idols like everybody else. But then all of a sudden, God shows up in his life. Just an amazing thing. Just think about it with me. That if we were all together with Abraham and God speaks to him, how different that would be. Like for instance, you're bowing down and worshiping at an idol and then he says, no, no, God actually spoke to me. Whoa. My idol doesn't speak to me. Uh, at least I don't think it does. You know, if, you know if, if it shifts a little bit, although somebody else is doing that in the back. Uh, no, it's, uh, you know, the idols never talk back. The idols never did anything for, for the people that were worshiping it, but rather Abraham can say, I talked with God. God is alive. Not just that he knows God, but he is alive compared to all the idols that were all about him. You think about that. Here we have an idol. What does an idol do by itself? The answer is nothing. Nothing. In fact, in order to be in existence, there's a person that would have to carve this idol up. Whatever it might be. You know, a person will say, oh, I, w- I, want a, I want a giraffe. I want an elephant. I w-, and you have all these different and you. Un- very interesting looking uh, gods of the Hindu that you have the, all these different weird looking uh, gods that they worship there, but these are just idols. Sad to remind ourselves that people, they serve idols that don't help them one bit. In fact, it's to their detriment. Abraham hears from God and forsakes the idols all around him. You think about it. Today, we are inundated with idols. All around America today, there's, there's idols all around. We see that in commercials. It's the idol of greed and desire, envy. Yo, know, I have to get the brand new you know, iPhone or whatever. I don't even know what, what number they're up to right now. And nothing wrong with having a brand new iPhone, but rather if it's become your God. You'll do anything in order to get that one thing. Uh, and that is the problem idolatry that of uh, idolatry is one of the oldest um, sins against God that there is in America has many many different idols that there are you think about all the different idols in America you can think of uh, the different philosophies that are around our country you think about all the things that are happening uh, specifically that shows how downgraded our country is from whence it began And just think about it, we, just like Abraham, we know the one true God. We know the one true God versus the idols that everybody else worships. Now the point for us here to take, are we worshiping those idols? We can be tempted, but are we really worshiping God? 
Are we worshiping the things that our hands can, can take and, uh, and devour in no time whatsoever? Are we also worshiping idols? For us, we need to keep focused on God. He is the only God there is. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is the only God. In the Old Testament, we see that He is the Lord and there is none else. Otherwise, He would know it. He is the only God and the only one that can be the Savior of all the humanity and the only Savior of all the world, and that's through Jesus Christ. We know the true and living God, so we need to really focus on Him throughout our day. We need to be like Abraham in this way, that he had God to speak to, and he obeyed what he had said. Notice with me, secondly, not only by faith he accepted God as real and as the idols around him as not, he, number two, he by faith accepted the rewards promised to him rather than the rewards that he left. Now turn back with me to Genesis Genesis chapter number 12. Just an amazing thing to think about how wealthy Abraham was. And notice with me what it says here in chapter number 12. And notice with me in verse number 1 of chapter 12. I still hear people changing pages, so I'll just wait for a second. In Genesis chapter number 12, verse number 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. So hold on, hold on. Let's just talk about that for a second. He's saying, okay, leave every single thing that you grew up with. Now right now, Abraham is 75 years old. Leave the place that you grew up in the place that you are so familiar with. Leave not only that, but also your family behind. Leave, leave everything behind and go to the place that I'm going to show you. It's not like today we, we have Google and say, okay, well, I'm going to whatever place, and okay, I, I see where it is. In fact, that's how I figured out where to go for you know, jury duty. Like, they, they sent me the, the information. I'm like, well, I've never been there. Bartow, I, I don't even know where that is. So I map quest it, and then I went on to Google, and I said, okay, what does it look like? And lo and behold, I see this entirety you know, display. So I knew exactly where to go when I was summoned to go to jury duty, and that I looked it up. I had awareness of where I was going. I never liked the feeling that I'm lost. Like, for instance, after one time of being in Orlando, my phone is dead, and I have no idea where to go. <laughs> and so I'm like, Lord, I need to figure out a way to get out of here. And so I'm just driving aimlessly around, and then all of a sudden I see a sign, not like a sign from God, but really a sign from God of I-4 is this way. I'm like, yes, I-4 is where I need to be. That's right. All right. So I, I was able to, to get there. So it's an amazing thing that Abraham, he didn't know where he was going. He didn't know what was going to be uh, befalling him, but he said yes to God. Notice with me what else he makes. He says, uh, unto a land I show thee, verse number one, verse number two, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt, make, uh, shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Just think about it. Think about it like this. You're Lewis and Clark. Okay, back in the early days of our country, you're going into this thing that we just purchased, the Louisiana Purchase. And so you're going to go and make discovery after discovery. You have no idea what's going on. And so, but guess what? They had a person on their side to help them through their troubles. Her name was? Sacagawea. Some of us probably still have the gold uh, Sacagawea dollars still in, in, our, uh, in our wallet somewhere. But uh, think about it. They had a guide. But God was the guide for Abraham. Abram, he heard the call to go. 
He didn't ask any questions. He didn't say, okay, well, where am I going to find food? He didn't ask any questions about, okay, am I going to be protected? Because God Himself said, I will bless them that bless you. And I find it interesting, I will curse him that curse thee. Singular. I don't know, I don't really understand why it's singular. I guess there's more people that are before him than against him. Um, but in all reality, God is the one that will help him through where he's going to. God is the one that will direct his path exactly where he's going to go. All he has to do is just focus on God. And the rewards that God is promising is absolutely out of this world. I will make thee a great nation. Let me ask you a question. How many kids does he have right now? <laughs> Goose egg. He has no kids whatsoever. In fact, he brought with him Lot, as we're going to see. Notice with me in verse number 4. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham, Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. So we have Lot. Well, what's the big deal about Lot? Well, in Middle Eastern custom, if you don't have a child, <laughs> you can take one of your other relatives and make them your heir. So Lot very well possibly could have been the heir of Abraham just in case it didn't work out with him having kids. Like he has had 75 years of trying to have kids and it didn't, didn't work out for him one iota up till this point. So Lot's going with him, and that's an amazing point. But yet the riches and the blessing that God has given Abram is just amazing. I will bless him. I will make thee a great nation. True enough, has Abraham become a great nation? Actually, has become a lot of great nations. You know, there's so many different people groups that can track their identity back to Abraham. In fact, there was an interesting thing about uh, missionary work that was um, specifically to a group of people, and that group is actually can trace their lineage back all the way to Ishmael. I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting there. He's all the way back to Ishmael, back to Abraham. Wow, that's just that's pretty amazing. So God keeps his word, and, and the things and the, the riches of God is, is much better than anything that he could have had back home in Ur. You think about it. He's leaving his... Family is leaving his possibility of more and more wealth. He's taking all he has and bye. Never see you again. Adios. And then goes off to, well, he has no idea where, but God does. The riches of God's blessings towards Abraham was enough for him to say, I know God is real. In fact, turn back with me to Hebrews chapter number 11. This goes well with what we talked about last week and talking about, uh, actually, two weeks ago. Last week, somebody kidded with me after the sermon saying, well, you did Noah, but we never left out of the flood. So uh, <laughs> I thought, that, oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't really get into the, the rest of the story. But notice with me what it says in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who's him? That's God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Abraham heard the voice of God, knew that God was, and was a rewarder of them that diligently sought him. He went his way, and God blessed him richly. God blessed him more and more. And even when you get to the point of Genesis chapter 24, where he is now on, on purpose looking for a wife for his son. The amount of wealth that he has at that point in time is just breathtaking. It, the servant is, is on his task. He has camel after camel full of stuff, just full of riches. And he's going to see, okay, an amazing understand about he seeks God's favor and God directs him exactly where to go and finds Rebecca there. And what a wonderful time that that is that God answers those specific prayer requests and that honors Abraham in such a way and God directed exactly who he wanted Isaac to marry. Oh, the wealth that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not talking about monetarily gain here and now as we are, you know, not None of us are millionaires as far as I know. 
So, uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the riches that are beyond the earth's comprehension. If you think about it, God is, he, he is uh, more and more about giving us richly that which we do not deserve. We don't deserve anything but hell and damnation, okay? But God has given us salvation through Christ. God has given us uh, so many different things that we have to look forward to. We have an inheritance with the saints in light. We have a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Uh, we have the very fact that we're going to be in that new Jerusalem coming down from heaven with the perfect reality before us. We're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ in the millennial kingdom. We have so much to be thankful for. The riches of Christ are greater than that of this world. And Abraham knew that and understand that. Notice with me what it says in verse number 8 uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after received for an inheritance, obeyed, and went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. That's the reward. As in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with them of the same promise. Think about with me, what, does, what, what is God promising him specifically? Well, specifically, God shows him, okay, look from the east, look to the west, look from the north, look to the south. Everything you see is going to be yours. Now, question. How much of that did he actually own when he died? A very little bit. It's a place to bury the dead is what he bought. That's the only place that he legitimately owned. But now, millennial kingdom, guess what we find? We find that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are there at the, 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 the Supper of the Lamb. And that, them specifically, Jesus makes mention of when the time of the millennial kingdom will come. Resurrected form and everything. Abraham's there. And at that point in time, guess what? He owns it all. <laughs> it's, it's all his. As what God had told him from, the, from Genesis. And so we see that wonderful reminder. By faith, he accepted the rewards that was promised, not the rewards that were given at the time. It was promised. Just like us, we are promised a home in heaven with Christ. One day he's going to come back and get us. We, by faith, accept that promise. And it should encourage our hearts every single day. The fact is that we're getting one day closer. Now, it could be another 2,000 years from now. I don't think it is, but it could be. In all reality, every single day, we have the opportunity to get closer and closer with God through Christ. And it's from that vantage point that we are richly given all things. And amazing to think about the very fact that, just like Abraham, we also have that promise. Not the very same specific promises, but yet promises nonetheless. But number three, number three, not only did he walk by faith and accepted God as real, not only did he, he walk by faith and accepted the rewards promised rather than the rewards left, he walked by faith, number three, with God, but still had moments of failure. He still had moments of failure. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. If I were to write a, a book and have different characters doing different things, I'm going to have the hero be the hero, right? I'm not going to really write down all the flaws and all the things. In fact, if I was really, a, I was really liking a hero of mine that is actually alive on the world, I might be thinking, well, okay, you know, downgrade all the, all the bad things about them and, and up, uplift all the good things and all that. But yet the Word of God, it shows you the exact reality of what it is. Abraham was a great, great uh, uh, person of faith, but yet still had struggles. We see that time and again with him having that lying uh, tongue about his wife. He goes into a place and he says, okay, here's the deal. You say you're my sister and they won't kill me. Okie dokie. So they go in. She's my sister. And there's only two occasions that we know of that it was found out to be false. 
Now, we have no idea whether or not he did this on a regular basis, or was these the only two times he did that? Who knows? But on reality, we see, okay, well, he fell there, and, uh, and he fell there, okay. He fell in different places, and, and just an amazing thing to think about that he had to walk by faith just as we do. And yet, for me, if people wrote down all my faults, it would be more than two times, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but just a reminder for us to be encouraged about our walk with the Lord is that we need to seek Him every single day. We need to seek Him and know that He is our great, exceeding great reward. We need to understand that yes, there's moments of failure, but yet there's also forgiveness in Christ. And so for us to seek Him out each and every day, that's what we ought to do. Just like Abraham uh, is an encouragement to us, we ought to do that each and every day, each and every one of us. So this week, let us get closer to God more than we did last week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this night you have given us. We ask you to help us to seek you out, to know you better, to obey you more. And Father, we ask you tonight to help us to know you in a special way this week, and especially give us opportunities to share the light of Christ. And Father, we thank you so much for your promises in your word. Help us by faith to walk before you daily and obeying you more than anybody else. I do pray, in Jesus' name, amen.